Okay, good. All right. Uh, Michelle McCusper was the woman. Yes, what happened with this? Um, she got knocked up, wasn't married, and... Well, the camera's running now. Go ahead. <laughs> and, and told the people there, and then... Got what, what, what did she do? Uh, she confessed to the principal, and the principal said... What was her job? She was a teacher. Where? Uh, okay, she's a math teacher at a Catholic private school. Michelle McCusker got pregnant out of wedlock, and she went in and she told the school principal. What What, what was the interaction there? Uh, she kind of told him. The principal said, like, oh, it'll be okay, and then three days later she gets fired. Got fired. Why? Anybody? Go ahead. Because he didn't want to marry the, the church father. What was why, though? Go ahead, Michael. Against their values. Against core Catholic teachings, if you remember. She signed a contract to uphold the core teachings of the Catholic faith, and ultimately the argument was that she wasn't going to get married. Sex out of wedlock, and, and, and this seems to be a problem. Now, with this in mind, what was the controversy about this? Go ahead, Adrian. Uh, because if it, if it was a guy, then it would have been fair. Because the guy can't show that he's pregnant. Okay, there were some people that said this was a women's rights issue. And some people had basically said, okay, number one, if, uh, I don't know, Tomas the Argentinian is basically practicing his trade with, with women on the weekends as a Catholic school teacher, he's not going to show, whereas Michelle McCusker would. So she would be fired, and if he did the exact same thing, he's not. If she signed a contract, she agreed to uphold the core teachings. And if she broke those teachings, she broke the contract, some people said the school should fire her. If you think about it, I'm paying when I send my kids to Catholic school for what? I'm paying for reading, writing, and arithmetic, the three R's as we say in the South, but I'm also paying for Catholic values. And if she's got this, Without one of these, then in fact, that's not the values that I'm paying for. And some folks would say, a school's going to lose its business if it doesn't fire her. What ended up happening? Go ahead, Max. Uh, the court ruled that uh, her case is invalid because um, her point that a man would not show yes. isn't really like good because not every woman would get pregnant if they were like sleeping around. Is, is, isn't that why they overturned it? Because... The, the the court justice said that she would that not every not not every woman that's sitting around gets pregnant. The court argued that she signed a contract and broke the contract and that she should be fired. The rationale behind it was it doesn't mean that every woman that gets pregnant or every woman that has sex is going to get pregnant. So some women are not getting pregnant and not getting caught, just like the man's not getting caught. So yeah, but but the basic reason was she violated the contract. Speaking of contracts, what was Heartbreak's Revenge? That was uh, the marriage contract. That was um, the, um, if someone, if your wife cheats on you, you have the right to sue the spouse, or to sue the, you as the spouse have the right to sue the, um, the, the person that she cheated on. The person that she's cheating with. Heartbreak's Revenge, if you remember, was a North Carolina law. And basically what it says is, is that we believe in protecting the sanctity of marriage. No ifs, ands, or buts about this. So basically what you have in this case, there was a man and his, I was a five or six year old son went with mommy supposedly on a business trip, but evidently she had an extramarital affair. Well, in North Carolina, when you think about it, marriage is a contract. Marriage contract everywhere. But in North Carolina, they have this law. What was it called? Alienation of, Alienation of affection. Where if somebody cheats with your spouse, they are effectively taking your property, in fact, and so you can sue for breach of contract. Do you remember how much he won in this case? How much? Two million. The biggest case in North Carolina was, I think, 2.1 million. The guy in particular in this one got a couple of hundred thousand. I think it was right in that range, so it was a little bit less. Still a lot of money. Um, some people get upset about this because in this, it's typically the man that sues when his woman is taken away. Effectively, her love has been stolen by this other person. Why don't you just sue your spouse? Go ahead. Who gave him? The person that cheated with his wife. Because he won the case. Yes, the person that cheated with his wife. Who, yeah. why, why won't you just not shoot, sue your wife? Because the idea is, like, somebody uh, took your wife, and if it wasn't for that person, she would have never cheated. 
And uh, in the past, uh, marriage contracts have been seen as the woman being a property. So they're saying you're technically stealing the property. So you That's what they're saying, but the reason you don't steal your spouse is half of, that's already yours. So you sue the other person to get something to replace that because the divorce is going to divvy up you know, those resources. You need to sue them. And some people say it's not about justice, but rather you're suing that other person for what? Revenge. Revenge. Revenge, Revenge is the piece. Yes? I don't want to argue that they didn't know they were married. Aren't you the note taker? <laughs> no, I mean, it's interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. I, you oh, could. Okay. Come on, man. We always know. <laughs> You look for the tan line. You know, I mean, there, there's always ways. There's always ways. Um, drones. There were two cases that I talked about with drones, and they involved weed. Do you remember what they were? Go ahead, Lamont. There was basically this guy who had went and then he had his tall fence around his property. Do not enter. No trespassing. Yeah, and basically the, his weed farm was basically in the middle of his property. And the, what did the police do? The police, they were going to another case. Unrelated to him. And they were flying over his land and basically saw the weed field and then came back and seized him. And were was that legal or was that an illegal search and seizure? It, the court ruled it as legal. Too. It was legal. Why? Um, because they said it was in plain sight. It was in plain view. I understand on this. If you fly the helicopter over and you're doing something illegal and the police see it, it's considered and it's in plain view and it's also considered that they could conceivably land the helicopter or come back and get you later. They're not violating your rights when they do this. Having said all this, what was the other weed example? Go ahead, Alvin. That was growing weed in his basement, not in plain view. How did they know? Um, I forget. I think it was. Like, they sent the drone, which was the size of a bird, to go next to the window and actually see it. No, but like, how did they actually know? Oh, it was. I thought it was like. Wait, wait, wait! wait. Yeah, don't be smoking the weed and answering. This, this is no, about a weed yeah. case. Yeah. Because they saw the lights and everything. The drone <laughs> flew over, and they were just kind of scoping things. Yeah, it was just. A and drone. they had an infrared in there, and the infrared picked up the lamps. And basically, their thought was, is when you have those intensive heat sources, there's, maybe it's a tanning salon, or maybe, in fact, they're growing weed. So they went over, they found this, and then they went back, they raided it, and they found the weed. Was it legal, Abraham? Why? No, because the thermal imaging was an invasion of privacy. Yeah, the idea was it's not in plain view at all. If they're flying over just randomly scanning things, they don't have any kind of probable cause. They don't have any warrants. In this instance, they're physically invading your house. So no, it's not legal. Um, house advances bill. What was the felon's bill? Anybody remember the felons in North Carolina? Go ahead, um, Lawrence. To, after a certain period of time, going to wipe out a felon's record so they could have a better time getting a job. 49 of the 50 states allow you to forgive one nonviolent felony, and North Carolina is the one that doesn't. If you have a nonviolent felony on your record, what do you lose the ability to do? Work. work. You're going to have to check the box that said, I was convicted of a felony, and odds are it's going to be difficult to get a, get a job. Go ahead. No, it allows you to uh, forgive one uh, nonviolent felony as a youth. Okay, but hang on, hang on. We're going to come back to that. What do you lose the ability to do, though? It's going to be harder to get a job. What else? Uh, Financial aid. Federal financial aid, military. If you can't go to school, if you can't get a job, if you can't join the military, odds are is that you're just going to commit more crimes, right? So the idea in this was we need to forgive one to give people a second chance. And slip it, you're right. This was for 17 and 18-year-olds. So if you're 20, no. If you're 25, no, even if you've been clean. But you get one chance. What was it that in North Carolina they were going to require you to do to demonstrate that you were productive and, and, and you had learned from this experience? Community hours. How many? Ten community hours. Ten community hours? It was, it was like 200. 200 or something. A hundred over two years, a hundred over 104 weeks, which means less than an hour. And when I mentioned to you nonviolent felonies, what was the one that we focused on in class more than any of the others? Because, you know, breaking and entering is a nonviolent felony. Home invasion, carrying a gun where? In school. Carrying a gun on school grounds. Carrying a concealed weapon on school grounds. So, number one, you would have 100 hours of community service over two years. Number two, what else did you have to do? You would do your time. You would pay the appropriate fines. Community service. Was there anything else? Probation. 
there was probation. So two years probation, 100 hours of community service, regular check-ins with legal professionals, counseling professionals, and if you remember, this would clear your record. They still hadn't quite passed this in North Carolina, and a number of you basically said, I want to know if somebody's got a concealed gun uh, uh, conviction in the past before I hire them to work in my store because this would be risking my life. By the same token, I also asked if you would hire them if you knew this, and just about everybody said, no, I wouldn't hire them if I knew this, but I would still want to know it, which of course defeats the purpose of forgiving the nonviolent felony. What was the strip club story? What religion or what place was it? A touch with class. Ah, yeah. A touch with class. That's the first thing I've understood you say all day, Manuel. And it's a strip club. Okay, a touch with class. What was the story with a touch with class? Elva, you probably remember this, right? No? They were, oh, selected. they were selected. I mean, <laughs> what did it say like that? Under, uh, they were trying to get some uh, prostitution, basically, and... No, 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 this was about religion. Are you sure yeah. we're talking about the same? It was, it was, it was the universalist faith. It was the universalist faith, and they had an establishment called a touch with class. Class with a K, mind you. A touch with class. So what was going on in this? Um, what did they practice? Go, go ahead, Manuel. You, you look eager. You were the church. Yes. Uh, what did they practice? What kinds of things would you go there and worship, Manuel? Uh, massages. What's that? Massages. Massages. What, what kind? Any, anything else? Happy ending. <laughs> oh, my God. If you remember, it was body cleansing. It was uh, fetish rooms, private rooms. All of the staff was all girl. You had to be 18 or older to worship in this church. And, and the argument was, is that while uh, ostensibly they said they were a massage parlor, a touch with class. Well, the idea was, is that they began to provide more services in these private rooms, which leads to where you just went. Now, the debate was, is this religion or, in fact, is this... Uh, prostitution, is this illegal? Um, anybody want to say anything? Do you remember some of the things that they said about religion in this? They were worshipping. They said they were worshipping, and, and they said that they would take visa for the assorted offerings that they would need. And they also say in the Constitution that it said uh, no federal law shall stop uh, any religion. Congress shall make no law abridging the free exercise of religion. No means no, so this should be allowed. They had things in there that said we believe in... Uh, we believe in basically hedonistic principles, pleasure for the body. That's been around forever. They had a placard on the wall that said, Jesus, protect us from your followers. They said in there, and effectively, we believe in worshiping what we want. You can worship what you want. And as long as nobody gets hurt, everybody should be fine. They never claim to be a church for tax purposes, but they're listed as a church in the phone book even though they're a massage parlor. And some of the more moral people got a little bit upset about that. Anybody remember, let's see, that covers all of these. Questions about anything from one? Um, professor, I thought that um, with the massage parlor thing that they also had to prove that they had like some scripture or something like that, or am I just not? Yeah, I think you're just not. Okay. Yeah, okay. that's it. Now, what's the clock on that say? Um, 13.30. Okay, push the red button and start it again. Keep it below 